out of it for years. Wait, wait a minute, when did you run it? Oh, you mean stole it. Uh, yeah. 86. Oh, okay. I so, yeah. 89. The first day I used it, the reason I used it is I just, I just took it and, and put it, stored it in Midtown and would keep it washed when it, when it through the uh, car wash. You're not going to charge me with this, are you? No, 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 no. The you run out of that when you okay, carry it. Okay, yeah, well, it's just a little short. Anyway, I kept the stats. But anyway, I uh, I broke my arm uh, uh, running. I, I broke my arm running. I was I was uh, running along a, uh, just, you know, running in Midtown. I was going along a rock wall about nine feet over a parking lot, and one of the rocks was loose, and I, I fell off of it, fell all the way down to the uh, to the pavement and really broke my arm real bad right here. And then the next year I broke it by falling off a mountain bike, same place, but it was bad the first time. Displaced fracture, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, so I, my other car, you know, I had this old Ford, 77 Ford. The power steering was broken, so I couldn't drive it one hand with it. So. And that's the reason I've been renting them anyway, because my, my car was so decrepit. You know, it looked so bad. Dude. Anyway, so I What kind of car was it? A Ford? That 77 Ford uh, LTD. Yeah. Yeah, a big old monster. Like a hop car? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but it wasn't blue, blue, was it? No, no. It was, it was, <laughs> I didn't have light right on there. The paint was all scaled. I was horrible looking. Uh, but anyway, the first day I drove the uh, uh, Chevy Cavalier. Chevy Cavalier. That's Cavalier, no. Still not ringing right. Anyway, the first day I drove it, the very first day I drove it to work in, you know, I was out picking up my fraudulent money. And uh, on the McGinnis Ferry Road, uh, State Patrol, Highway Patrol had a, a road check there. Came along and uh, right where you cross the Chattahoochee River on the uh, east side of the river, they had a road check set up. And you really couldn't see it because they were kind of in dead space or something. Well, you know, that's the way they had it, of course, so you can't see it uh, two miles away. Still would be the good, of course, if you turn around, they'd be after you. But anyway, yeah, I drove into it. I, you know, I was just in it before I knew it. I went gulp. And, uh, this is before the computerized insurance, so you had to have proof of insurance, too. And he said, uh, uh, proof of insurance, driver's license. So I flipped, I flipped in my forged uh, contract, which you couldn't read anyway. It was a carbon copy, but it, I had it. The, the date was just illegible, but the legible part was that I had insurance and my name and address on it. And I kind of half-assed to raise the date. It was carbon anyway, so yeah, it just looked, it looked real. You know, it's just like the third carbon on some. But you could see it was my name and address, and that I had purchased insurance because that box was checked proof of insurance. And uh, so I handed that my driver's side. He didn't even look at it. He just shot it back to me, returned mail. He opened it and like that. Oh, oh, geez. And I drove that car for three more years <laughs> like that. until I bought a truck. I bought, I bought a yeah, monster. But uh, when did you get the Mazda? 89. <laughs> so you got it in 86 and you drove that way? Well, I started driving it. I had it stored for several months until I broke my uh, my arm. And then I just started driving it. And once, once I went through that road check, you it was there. okay. And it did have the drive out tag on it, but all those uh, celebrities, that's what it was, the celebrities. Celebrity, Eurosport, yeah, nice, nice car. Those were those cars had a great design. Uh, the uh, the trunk was just a box. You could take a bike and just take the front front wheel off and put a bicycle right in the trunk. I mean, it was just a box, a four door, just beautiful, usable space. Sporty enough, uh, good handling, good performance. They were just you know crummy, uh, crummy built. But uh, but once I ran through that road check, I said, hey. oh, but anyway, it had the drive drive out tag, so it was supposedly a new car, but they all looked the same in those years also. They used the same design all the way through uh, through 89 uh, because, uh, or even through 90, yeah, through 90 because, uh, and I was living in an apartment on uh, 11th Street right on uh, Piedmont Park, right on the park. And so once I ran through that road check, uh, well, hey, <laughs> oh, and I kept it washed. I always made sure I kept it clean so it looked. Did you have any roommates back around that time or anything? No. You said? All the time I've had a roommate was that time with that, uh, or twice, a guy named John Moss back in 82. Uh, I lived with him for about six months. Uh, and uh, Chris Johnson, who called in telling, uh, again, one of the people that called in 
12 years later to lash me. You know, <laughs> Chris, you might have, it, that was in the article called Misfit with a Mean Street. And that was really a hatchet job. It said I drifted around for North Georgia for a decade. Jesus Christ. And from 97 to 2007, except for a six month break, I worked for 10 years, I worked for the same company. Mm -hmm. And for nine years, I lived at the same address, checking on DMV. And they're making me out to be some drifter. I worked for the same company 10 years and I had the same address for nine years prior to prior to my rent. Since 97? Yeah. 97, 97 I started there and in 98 I lived there, started living there. Right. And in 2001 I had a six month break I was away from. What did you do for that? Work for another company. The guy was stealing from me the whole time and uh, it was a shame, real shame. Uh, it, we all, we all, even guys like myself that are just totally sociopathic, uh, we still need some human to trust. Right. Even if we're not close to them. Right. To trust them, even if it's a business associate. And I chose to trust them. And, and that's is why, this is John Taylor. John Taylor, yeah. Okay. And that's why I got away with it, you see. It's because when you choose to trust someone, it's kind of a dimming of awareness. It's like with your spouse. You're in love with your spouse, so you dress them up in your love. And you make them quite often into something that they really weren't. Even oh, though a pedestal on us. It, that's what I mean. Dress them. Cindy Lauper put out a song. You remember Cindy, Cindy Lauper? And it's dress them up in my love. And I thought that that's a good line. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and and, so, and and quite often people find that their spouses really weren't who they themselves made them out to be. Right. And they find that their spouses were looking them in the eye for the whole ten years and saying, "Honey, I love you." There'll never be another one. And sleeping with them and being intimate with them and the whole time sharing their body and their life and their emotions with some other woman or some other man. But it's an all too common story. It's psychopathic behavior, but everyone does it. Because one of my favorite observations that I've come to learn through my philosophical insight is that personal integrity is so hard to judge because everyone has different degrees of integrity according to what they're doing and who they're doing it with. Mm. And ain't that the truth? We all do. Yeah. We all do. We all do. Well, maybe you guys always are, have integrity, but but whether you're a preacher or some outstanding member of the community, I, I, I think I used the example with one of you driving up here. I think both of you were with me, weren't you? No. Didn't you, both of you drive me up to Union County? Yes, Dan. I thought you were with me too. Well, you were in the back seat and we were talking about hiking. Yeah, do I even know my shit or what? I, I switched go. from uh, boots to shoes, actually. Great. And uh, do yourself a favor. Well, m modern hiking shoes uh, generally have a good patty, but consider how. Are, are, are your shoes plenty big enough? Right. Okay. If you're ever having any trouble at all with plantar or your bottoms of your feet getting sore, the feet themselves. Yeah, we talked about that. Make sure you put a pad under them. Oh, did we? Okay. Yeah, yeah. get a Dr. Scholl double thick, double thick pad. Yeah, yeah. Uh, some people, if, if, if some people say they need the ankle support, well, that's for them to judge. But I didn't need it. Now remember, when you roll that ankle, go with it. Uh, stress relief. Don't go all the way down, but don't fight it either. Just mm -hmm. go down. Re relieve the stress. You know. I. I what? So, the nineties was pretty much the same deal. You were staying in an apartment up until... Uh, no, no, no. Uh, I went homeless in uh, early 90. Early 90? Yeah, the reason I went homeless is I was being investigated once again, yet again, by the police. For the same thing? Yeah, yeah. And I knew, I knew what went down. Uh, I was hiring people to go out and collect. Right. And they were not cognizant of the reality of the situation. They thought it was for real. Naturally. Can't put that in the paper and hire a big say this is a con game. Now, I had a whole story that I'd give to, to make it real. This is out, you know, King James production out of, you know, Miami and Georgia Veterans Journal and I handle this once a year for them. They have this project, I do it. And so I'm using you and all these, et cetera, et cetera, you know. You, and here I am working out of an apartment. I could get, I kept three phones in an apartment, you know, in all my apartments. And several times a year, I would hire people to come in and call my taps, as they're called, accounts. 
And the reason I did is because I can only talk to them three or four times a year. They recognize my voice. And ditto with picking them up. I can only pick them up three or four times a year, even wearing disguises, you know. And so I have to have a new voice and a new face to pick them up. So I was using a collector. The collector failed to, to come in. And I started calling around roommates, parents. And I started getting the vibes. Something had happened. And it, by the event, now it's happened. And it, by the event, now it's sort of later at night. And, you know, police officers are like any, anyone else. They like to work regular hours if they can. So I knew they wouldn't be there until the next morning, more than likely. So I got up real early the next morning. I got all my stuff out of the apartment that was sensitive. And went out of the storage locker. And went and put it in the storage locker. Then as I came back, I parked my car in Midtown and I approached through Piedmont Park and sneaked up on, on the dead end of the low steep and, and peered over the embankment. And uh, there were two plain clothes offs. Oh, and I left a note on my apartment door. Back soon, please wait. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> and waiting, they were in a, guess what, a Chevy Celebrity. That's what Atlanta play, uh, Play close police used for all, during all those years of the Chevy celebrities, same as mine. As a matter of fact, that celebrity was white and it looked so much like a police car because the police, the police used it all during those years mm -hmm. that I would go over in the African American side of town. There's no place I wouldn't pick up. So I'd, I'd, I'd be picking up black liquor stores in the heart of darkness over there, places where Simpson Street, uh, all these places. Uh, Places where to, a white person to walk down the street would be, to, to, you'd be scalped, you'd be fucking scalped. I just mossed them, and I'd act like a police officer. I'd get out, I'd drive up in that car, ultimately, I had the invoice in my hand in an, in an envelope. Well, I, I had the mindset that this was a warrant, or a subpoena, <laughs> and I was a cop. And, you know, and I looked like a cop, <laughs> you know, because I was well built, and, and I carried myself like a cop. I'd drive up in this plainclothes police car, get out. You know, like I own the damn place. I got my, my court order in my hand, and I go in there and pick up my five dollars. I'm telling you, I go, I go into the risk my life to pay. Anyway, more than once, I've gotten out of. I'll tell you one time, I got out of the car, slammed the door, and, and a black guy. It's a liquor store, and you know how they hang around there. There, I, I got to, I got to run a gauntlet of black guys hanging around in front of a liquor store. I got to walk right through them. Okay, that's what you call. Uh, Occupying your space. That's what you call officer presence. Okay, mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I had it. I had. It. I had a guy one time. I got out of that car and he was in front of a liquor store. He put his hands up. He said, "Okay, you got me." <laughs> I said, "I don't want you." <laughs> he thought I was there for him. <laughs> and Did he what? carry any weapons with him? I mean, no, I, no, no, no. I'd had a gun. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, uh, because I was convicted of him. At the time, I got a uh, felony dies of ham uh, conviction in '84. Uh -huh. We didn't go, go over that, but it's on my record. Right. Uh, you'll also see a, a concealed weapon uh, conviction, or it's called. I was convicted of that. It was dropped. I had a permit. Right. I had a weapons permit. And no, what I was doing is I was walking around a, an apartment complex, looted out on dies of ham, loose with a pistol in my fucking hand, a 25 looking for the maintenance guy to collect the debt for the girl that I had fucked the night before whose husband was out of town. Mm -hmm. And I walked right into the, looted out, looted totally out, walked right into the apartment rental office with a 25 in my hand. I had my little date book and I had it pressed up against that so I wasn't carrying it like that. But it was out. I thought my shit was so good looking for this guy. I was going to collect $12 from <laughs> him. That, this, I booked the chick the night before who was my dealer for the Quaaludes, who was a musician out of town, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's how I got busted, uh, because uh, Forest Park Police responded, uh, flagged me down as I was driving out with the chick in the car. Uh, the chick was messing with her purse and got it upended and about a hundred pills spilled out of her purse. You know, it was get out of the car time then, <laughs> and I was so fucked up. But anyway, so the charge was dies of hand and marijuana and the pistol. But I had a permit for the pistol, <laughs> believe it or not. But I got the felony conviction on dies of hand. Any amount of dies of hand was a felony or is a felony. Any amount. So you, yeah. And so I, I, so the, I was convicted of felony. And so carrying a pistol, 
uh, on any kind of bust would have made it 30 times as bad because I've, 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 I've weathered uh, a couple of free busts and, and a half a dozen investigations uh, on, the, on the fraud, you know. And I can do that, I can handle that, but not, not firing by felon, you know. Oh, probably half a dozen times I found out I was being investigated. I've called one of my accounts up and one of my taps up that I've been calling, you know, four times a year for 10 years. You know, hello, it's me again. <laughs> You know, hello, it's me again, Georgia Veterans, or, hey there, huh? Georgia Inspector's Journal, oh, is that who you are this time? Yeah, yeah, uh, ten dollars, okay. You go there to take it out. Store owner would look up and say, oh, it's him again. He couldn't get anyone to come for him. He's done come himself. I'd walk up, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. oh, they asked me to pick this up, you know, like I've never seen him before. They'd start making out the check, their manager would say, uh, what's that for? And they'd say, don't ask. <laughs> They know it was a game. They still give it to me. It was amazing. It was just totally amazing. But anyway, no, they didn't carry guns.